major funding for KPBS Evening Edition has been made possible in part by Anderson Plumbing, Heating and Air, proud to support the mission of KPBS and privileged to serve San Diego clients. Anderson Plumbing, Heating and Air, helping homeowners maintain drain, heating and cooling systems since 1978. And by the Conrad Prebis Foundation, Darlene Marco Shiley, and by the following. by viewers like you. Thank you. Good evening, it's Monday, November 30th. Thanks for joining us. I'm Amitha Sharma, filling in for Maya Trabulsi. Reduce the number of COVID cases or face drastic action. That is the warning tonight from Governor Gavin Newsom. Cases across California are climbing even higher. Here at home, we saw a record-breaking 1,859 cases Saturday. Today, officials report 959 cases and no deaths. KPBS reporter Shalina Chatlani says the governor is ready to implement a lockdown if the number of hospitalizations look like they could become unmanageable. Our seven day average in terms of new case numbers is north of 14,000, 14,657 to be precise. During the peak, the previous peak was 9,881 compared to the close to 15,000 cases that we're now experiencing. At a press conference today, Governor Gavin Newsom laid out California's coronavirus situation and the forecast is showing a surge in hospitalizations and intensive care unit occupation. The news comes as many cities across the state are experiencing many holiday related outbreaks, including San Diego. On Saturday, officials reported over 1,800 new cases and pointed to a wakened church in Kearney Mesa as the source of a major outbreak. Newsom says California now has a positivity rate of 6.2 percent, up from 4.7 percent a few weeks ago. Roughly 12 percent of our new cases likely will be hospitalizations uh, over a two-week period, meaning once a case is reported, about 12 percent of the time when you look at the aggregate, the cumulative number of cases, 12 percent of those are likely to be individuals then hospitalized. Newsom says that by around Christmas, on average, about 78% of hospital beds are expected to be occupied. That's because he says without additional interventions or changes in behavior, California's hospitalizations will likely increase by two to three times in just one month. And 10 to 30% of those hospitalizations could go to the ICU. If these trends continue, we're going to have to take much more dramatic arguably drastic action, including taking a look at those purple tiered counties, and they are now 51 of the 58 counties. We had nine counties over the weekend move backwards. Newsom said that at the same time, he's going to be focusing his efforts on how to provide economic relief for small businesses across the state and hopes he can work with the legislature to provide more financial assistance. Shalina Chatlani, KPBS News. Local health officials are expecting to see a surge in COVID-19 testing after Thanksgiving. KPBS reporter Jacob Baer says travelers are returning to San Diego after the holiday and it could lead to a further rise in coronavirus cases. San Diego County set new daily records of positive COVID-19 tests over the past week. Health officials are now urging anyone that traveled or gathered over the Thanksgiving holiday to get tested and quarantined for 14 days to avoid an even more significant surge in cases. If you're out and about and, you know, you went to a holiday gathering, you were in the airports, uh, you were in the restaurants or restrooms and you got infected, okay. it's important to get tested so that if you are positive, you can get yourself out of the community back into your house where you won't be spreading it around more widely. The amount of recent travel and rising cases may also lead to long lines at testing sites like seen today at the Tubman Chavez Community Center. Leslie Buluran was in line today because one of her coworkers tested positive for the virus. I have people under my household that have a lot of underlining health issues and I wanna make sure that I am always cautious. So this is one of the steps that I do to protect myself and uh, my household. Buluran says she believes people can abide by health guidelines and still enjoy the holiday season. I feel like there's, we still have time 
as long as um, everybody wear their mask and stay inside as much as possible and um, hopefully we can enjoy the holidays. LaCroix says the rest of the holiday season will likely bring even higher case counts in COVID-19 deaths unless further measures are taken to abide by CDC guidelines. It makes me want to cry for our, for our population because I just think it's going to be an enormous amount of pain uh, these next two months. San Diego County has over 35 testing locations throughout the region. To book an appointment or find a non-appointment test site, go to san diego.gov or call 211. Jacob Ayer, KPBS News. The Biden transition team is making big moves. After announcing key communications personnel this weekend, the president-elect confirmed top economic team members this morning. These economic experts will be tasked with guiding the nation's recovery from the coronavirus pandemic, a health crisis expected to be more dire when Joe Biden takes office on January 20th. But there could be some relief on the horizon as we, may, as we take one step closer to a vaccine. Karen Kafa has the latest from Washington. President-elect Joe Biden announcing his incoming communications team, the team that will plan an unprecedented inauguration and an economic team led by Treasury Secretary nominee Janet Yellen poised to chart an economic recovery from the nation's coronavirus crisis, which is getting more dire. There is a great risk that we could stall out or even have a double dip recession if we continue to let this virus rage out of control like this. The TSA said Sunday was its busiest day at screening checkpoints since March, with more than 1.17 million passengers passing through and meeting about 9.4 million flyers overall defied CDC guidance to stay home for the Thanksgiving period. Medical experts fear how the weight of a new surge on top of an existing surge will overwhelm the nation's hospitals. Healthcare is a finite resource. We just can't create critical care nurses overnight. Um, and at some point, uh, we will be at our capacity. Meanwhile, pharmaceutical company Moderna applying Monday to the FDA for emergency authorization of its COVID-19 vaccine, which data indicates could be more than 94% effective. Our goal all along was to demonstrate the most effective, the safest, and the most thoroughly Vetted vaccine. The FDA will meet in December to review emergency use applications from both Moderna and Pfizer. In Washington, Karen Kafa, KPBS News. Los Angeles County entered a new stay-at-home order today in an attempt to stop the recent surge in cases. Health officials are urging people to stay home as much as possible over the next three weeks. All public and private gatherings are banned except for church services and protests. Last week, restaurants and bars serving food were ordered to close except for takeout and delivery services. The San Francisco 49ers have a new home, at least for the next two home games. They'll be in Glendale, Arizona, after being forced to find an alternative site because of Santa Clara County's ban on contact sports for the next three weeks. The pandemic has led to millions of unemployment claims and efforts by the state and Bank of America to cut down on possible fraud. But as KPBS reporter Max Rivlin Nadler tells us, those efforts have ensnared San Diego residents with legitimate unemployment claims, leaving many of them fighting for their benefits for months. Gary Hito immigrated to San Diego from Ethiopia 20 years ago. For the past 16 years, he's been a shuttle driver at the San Diego airport. When the pandemic hit in March, thousands of flights were canceled and Hito was soon furloughed. If the situation come back, they will hire me again. Hito was able to get unemployment a month after that. For a household including his wife and four school-aged children, the money from unemployment was huge. For rent, for family, I have a big family. But in the middle of October, his account was almost zeroed out. $4,200 were gone. When I went there to take my money for rent, I don't see the money. He's been fighting to get his money back ever since. When I call, uh, they, they said they will send me another card. After they send me another card, the situation is the same. Again, I try to call to explain to them. They transferred to me for about three people. The last one, it says, uh, wait, your call is important to us. You have to wait about, I wait about one hour and 15 minutes, then they hang up. 
Despite call after call to Bank of America, he's been unable to get the process even started. California is one of only three states in the country that doesn't directly deposit unemployment insurance payments to people's bank accounts. Instead, it sends them debit cards from Bank of America. These debit cards were chosen as a way to make sure people without bank accounts can still access their unemployment benefits. But the cards have proven susceptible to theft and skimming devices. There are also fraudulent claims being made to the state's Employment Development Department, which administers the state's unemployment system and authorizes the amounts on the debit cards. Widespread fraud for a state with emptying coffers means the state has been cracking down on any accounts that look fraudulent. But working immigrants like Hito and laid-off house cleaner Rama Ibrahim, who's from Somalia, have found their accounts zeroed out as well. She said for the last three months, she's been told by the bank to take up her case with the state, and vice versa. Navigating the various help numbers as well as a major bank and an overwhelmed state bureaucracy is difficult even for people with English as a first language. So Ibrahim and Hito depend on the work of the Somali Bantu Association of America. From its office on University Avenue in City Heights, Executive Director Saeed Abiyao has helped thousands of African immigrants navigate the state's social safety net. They don't speak any English. They were having difficult connecting the resources that are available for them. They don't know the updates of the coronavirus and everything. We, as the agency, we were trying to provide translation through WhatsApp. On a recent Thursday, Abiyao scrolled through a blizzard of WhatsApp messages he'd sent that day, providing updates on closures, safety guidelines, and how to sign up for unemployment. The organization also runs both rent relief programs and food distribution programs several times a week. But even with the organization's help, Gary Hito and Rama Ibrahim have still hit dead ends. Bank of America and the state didn't restore their accounts after countless attempts, claiming they haven't been cleared of fraud. Rancho Penasquitos resident Ian Mack is in the same boat. An independent contractor in the entertainment industry, he spent the past two months trying to get his account, with over $8,000 in it, restored. He reads a letter he was sent. The well, claim has been closed because we believe the account of uh, the account or, or the claim have been subject to fraud or suspicious activity. If you have any questions, please call us at... One time, he even spent over five hours on hold. The people who, who, who have rent to pay, the people who have car, car payments to pay, as you say, the people who've got four or five kids and can't feed their... You know, not every day can you go to a food bank and there's, and there's food there. And why should they have to do that? through no fault of their own. In a statement, a Bank of America spokesperson told KPBS that it is working with law enforcement to crack down on fraudulent claims and that anyone with a legitimate claim impacted by these efforts should contact them immediately. But for a lot of people just trying to keep a roof over their head this holiday season, that task can not only be daunting, but near impossible. Max Ruflin Adler, KPBS News. After KPBS contacted Bank of America about these claims, Ian Mack and Rama Ibrahim's funds were restored. The bank tells KPBS it has also begun the process of working on Gari Hito's claim. We're following all the latest coronavirus developments at kpbs.org. Just click on the Tracking COVID-19 button on our homepage for updates. The Navy will scrap the USS Bonhomme Richard after a fire in July. KPBS military reporter Steve Walsh says it would be too expensive to rebuild a ship that is more than 20 years old. The fire started in a vehicle hold and burned through the deck, melting the aluminum superstructure. Naval investigators estimated it would cost up to $3.2 billion and take up to seven years to rebuild the USS Bonhomme Richard. Monday, Rear Admiral Eric Van Haag announced that the Navy decided the damage was too widespread to save the ship. From a damage perspective, it was extensive. Probably 60 percent of the ship would require replacement. And uh, in general terms, it was the flight deck and the island and the mast and then many of the levels directly below the flight deck. The ship's crew of 1,000 was notified today. The ship will now undergo decommissioning in San Diego, which could take up to a year before the ship is ultimately sent to be scrapped. We're still working on the timeline. As I said, 9 to 12 months. I expect the um, preps for tow and harvesting have already begun. 
And we're, we're still working on the precise timeline, though. The Bonhomme Richard was built in 1998. When the fire broke out, it was undergoing a $250 million renovation to accommodate the F-35 fighter. The Navy has already said they're looking at whether the fire was caused by arson. The criminal investigation is still underway. Steve Walsh, KPBS News. It's been a record-breaking year for wildfires in California and the full toll on East County residents who lost homes in our region's biggest fire is still settling in. I'm News Source reporter Camille Von Kamel explains. When the Valley Fire started getting close to Eileen Menzies' home near Homol three months ago, the 78-year-old knew it was different. The other fires in the past, we've always had a fire engine in everybody's driveway and uh, we've had our property protected. But like I said, it's never crested the hill before, and this time it crested the hill. So I figured this one was gonna be pretty serious. Her home was one of 30 destroyed in the 16,000 acre fire. Now, local and federal officials are negotiating who will pay for what. The costs are big, nearly $7 million. That includes damage to public property and a county program to help residents clear debris from the fire. For residents, the to-do list is long figure out insurance if they had it, apply for federal aid, get power and water restored. Menzies has insurance to replace the mobile home where she lived, but it may not be enough. For now, she and her neighbors are just trying to recover. For KPBS, I'm my news source reporter, Camille Von Canel. iNewsource is an independently funded nonprofit partner of KPBS. The Santa Ana winds or dangerous fire weather conditions are expected to return this week. Meteorologist Mark Mancuso has your forecast. Well, plenty of sunshine for the upcoming week and our temperatures will be slowly rising, uh, but it uh, looks like uh, the end of the week will be turning cooler. So Wednesday through the weekend, temperatures will start to retreat. We'll start to see our winds increasing too. We'll see uh, some gusty winds at times offshore the next couple of days. Then uh, late Wednesday and into the weekend, looks like a prolonged Santa Ana wind event. And with our dry conditions, uh, critical fire conditions will make a return. For tonight, upper 30s, Oceanside, upper 40s in San Diego. Ooh, Ramona's down below freezing. Mount Laguna's in the mid 20s and Borrego Springs down to 38. Dress warmly tonight. As we check Tuesday, well, starting to see those breezes, fire concerns starting to rise here. Uh, we're bone dry, no precipitation is in the offing. Just lots of sunshine. Forecast high 72, Oceanside 73, San Diego. That's pretty nice. Ramona's at 79 and El Cajon's at 81. Quite comfortable. Uh, Mount Laguna's at 70, Borrego Springs at 78. Now on Wednesday, uh, we'll start to push in some of the cooler air. The winds will start to pick up, so the fire danger increasing as well. So locally strong winds, dry vegetation, low humidity. So all those combining uh, for those critical fire conditions. Temperatures pleasant into Wednesday. Then we start to cool off for the end of the week. As we uh, take you to the inland sections, mild Wednesday and then Thursday, temperature is trending down. As we head up to the mountains, you can see the cooler air coming in Thursday. Plenty of sunshine, though. And as we take you into the deserts, it looks uh, quite pleasant here with highs in the upper 70s, uh, lower 70s. Plenty of sunshine for the end of the week and into the weekend. And for KPBS News, I'm meteorologist Mark Mancuso. Conservative Supreme Court justices are hinting they may sidestep issuing a ruling on President Trump's attempt to exclude undocumented immigrants from being counted in the 2020 census. The president does not want them to be counted in the official total, which is used for dividing the seats in the House of Representatives among the states. In today's oral arguments held over the phone, some justices suggested the high court should wait because the Trump administration may run out of time anyway. 31 days left in the year. Uh, to exclude the 10.5 million seems to me a monumental task uh, to do that without sampling. If Trump succeeds in his proposal, it would be the first time of excluding undocumented immigrants from the congressional count. A lower court has blocked Trump's initiative and several states want the Supreme Court to affirm that ruling. 
The University of California system is extending the deadline for fall 2021 admissions because of technical difficulties with its website. The deadline had been today, but yesterday the UC online application experienced an outage. Now, prospective students have until 11.59 p.m. on Friday to apply. Although UC schools are offering most classes online, UC San Diego has seen growth. It recently surpassed the 40,000 enrollment mark for the first time. A local resource center is hoping to make the holidays a little more special with baskets for families who have faced a difficult year. KPBS North County reporter Tanya Thorne tells us more. The pandemic made this year a busy one for the Community Resource Center in Encinitas. We've seen increase, significant increases, 43% increases in people seeking food assistance, 53% increase in people calling our DV hotline for help. And so those increases have really just um, been exposed and exacerbated by COVID. The center serves several North County communities with wraparound services, including rental and utility assistance, a food pantry, and domestic violence prevention and intervention support. Making sure that we help people create paths to healthy food, uh, stable homes, and safe relationships. Uh, and a path that is paved with the help of case managers who assist families in navigating the rental assistance application and any other services they may need. To make the holidays a little more special, the Community Resource Center is putting together holiday baskets for families who have faced a difficult year. This year it will be a one-day drive through event. Everybody's pre-registered. 1,100 households will be served. and so Volunteers put together baskets for families, seniors, and newborns that will include food, blankets, household items, and games. This year's baskets have been specifically designed with puzzles and games for the families spending more time at home. An event made possible by the help of volunteers throughout North County. I think people are just very loving this community and loving this um, community resource center. It's just, a, it's just a beacon of light for some families. In Encinitas, Tanya Thorne, KPBS News. It's Cyber Monday and Americans are busy online. The National Retail Federation expects sales will increase 30% this year compared to last year. If you're shopping online today, one expert shares the five things you should wait until next year to purchase. Meredith Wood has more in today's Consumer Watch. Before you click buy, take a second look at your virtual shopping cart. Here are five things one expert says you should wait to buy next year to save the most. Number one, mattresses. Nationally syndicated Tech Life columnist Jennifer Jolly says prices will be better next year. Historically, the deepest discounts arrive, arrive in February. Uh, so unless your mattress is completely destroyed and keeping you up at night, wait it out. Number two, bedding and linens to go with that new mattress. That's because department stores usually have their annual sales in January and February. Number three, outdoor gear. Many retailers have their biggest sales in May and September. So you'll have a wider array of discounted gear to choose from if you just hold off a couple more months. Number four, jewelry and diamonds. She says November through February tends to be a popular time of year for couples to seal the deal, creating a high demand for rings, which leads to higher prices. The holidays are a super hot time to get engaged. Yes, even during a pandemic. So the biggest sales happen, like the biggest, deepest discounts on diamonds, diamond rings, engagement rings, and really all kinds of jewelry happen in March. And number five, cars. You'll likely find a better deal after Christmas during end of year sales. The car dealerships need you more than you need them. They need to get rid of all the 2020 models to really start selling the 2021 models. So there'll be deeper discounts throughout the end of December into January. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Meredith Wood. The Farmers Insurance Open will tee off at Torrey Pines Golf Course in January. However, organizers say spectators will not be allowed to attend the event, set for January 28th through the 31st. The tournament, part of the PGA Tour's West Coast Swing, is televised each year on the Golf Channel. 
I'm Judy Woodruff. Tonight on the News Hour, the U.S. faces another spike in COVID infections following the Thanksgiving holiday. Coming up at 7 after Evening Edition on KPBS. Here's a recap of our top stories. Governor Gavin Newsom says if coronavirus cases and hospitalizations continue surging at their current level across the state, he may issue a stay-at-home order. Today, San Diego County reported 959 cases and no deaths from the virus. Local health officials are expecting a surge in COVID-19 testing after Thanksgiving. The high number of travelers and rising cases may also lead to long lines at testing sites, like seen today at the Tubman Chavez Community Center. There are 35 testing locations throughout the county. The Navy will scrap the USS Bonhomme Richard after a fire in July. Naval investigators estimate it would cost more than $3 billion and take seven years to rebuild the ship. The crew of 1,000 was notified today. The ship will now undergo decommissioning in San Diego, which could take a year before it is ultimately scrapped. You can find tonight's stories on our website, kpbs.org slash evening edition. Thank you for joining us and have a great evening. Major funding for KPBS Evening Edition has been made possible in part by Anderson Plumbing, Heating and Air, proud to support the mission of KPBS and privileged to serve San Diego clients. Anderson Plumbing, Heating and Air, helping homeowners maintain drain, heating and cooling systems since 1978. And by the Conrad Prebis Foundation, Darlene Marco Shiley, and by the following, by viewers like you. Thank you.